The career of an actor is a scary and unpredictable one. The overwhelming majority of performers aren't lucky enough for it to be their sole occupation. And even for those who make it, getting paid doesn't guarantee artistic satisfaction. The factors which go into delivering a critically and commercially successful film are extremely complex. And so, even the most respected A-list name actors can find themselves trapped in projects which just don't deliver the goods. A single dud movie movie is one thing, but sometimes actors get caught in an unfortunate loop of terrible films, whether a result of bad luck, a poor agent, or their own craven desire to scoop up as many paychecks as possible. While for some of these actors it's just a matter of time before their career rebounds with a quality project, for others it seems like they're content to collect easy paydays for the rest of their career, wasting their immense, often Oscar-nominated talents in the process. I'm Gareth from What Culture.com and here are 10 great actors who keep appearing in terrible movies. Number 10. Gary Oldman Gary Oldman is one of the greatest and arguably most underappreciated actors of his generation, such that his 2018 Best Actor Oscar win for playing Winston Churchill in Darkest Hour felt like a damn long time coming. But Oldman's talents might well be undervalued because his output is so freakishly inconsistent, especially in more recent years. For every iconic banger movie role, there are typically a few duds Oldman clearly sleepwalked his way through for a payday. Things truly fell off a cliff after he appeared in 2014's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, though. Since then, Oldman has appeared in a dozen films, with only one of these being well-received, that being Darkest Hour. Though his dud streak started with theatrical stinkers like Child 44, Criminal, The Space Between Us, and Hunter Killer, in more recent years he's gingerly entered the straight-to-VOD dungeon, appearing in near-universally pan thrillers like Killers Anonymous, Mary, and The Courier, which have an average Rotten Tomato score of just 3.3%. Yikes. Number 9. Clive Owen Back in the mid-2000s, it seemed like Clive Owen was destined to become an A-list mainstay. He had the looks and the acting chops, and starred in a number of acclaimed projects such as Closer, for which he received an Oscar nomination, Sin City, Inside Man, and Children of Men. A few years later, producers evidently began to lose interest in him for their marquee roles. And so, in the last decade, only three of Owen's 15 movies have scored positive reviews. Indie dramas Trust, Shadow Dancer, and The Confirmation were well received, along with Owen's widely lauded performance in Steven Soderbergh's TV series The Nick. But his more mainstream cinematic output has largely consisted of mediocre to terrible thrillers such as Killer Elite, Intruders, Blood Ties, and Last Night, and sci fi schlock like Anon, Valerian, and Gemini Man. Owen doesn't have any announced upcoming movie projects, so you probably shouldn't expect a big screen comeback from him anytime soon, sadly. Number 8. Eva Green much like Clive Owen, Eva Green seemed primed to become a huge star in the mid-2000s, making a name for herself playing Vesper Lindt in 2006's Casino Royale, but largely failed to land in compelling projects thereafter. Of Green's mere 15 movie roles since Casino Royale, just three of them have received positive reviews, two of them little scene indies being The Salvation and Proxima, and the other Tim Burton's Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which was only broadly praised for the most part. To her credit, Green is often lauded as the best thing in bad movies, but watching the likes of Dark Shadows, 300, Rise of an Empire, and Sin City, A Dame to Kill For in particular, you really have to wonder why Hollywood doesn't have more to offer such an appealing and talented actress. Though Green doesn't have much on the cinematic horizon right now, she did at least find a suitable home for her acting chops on the small screen, with her Golden Globe-nominated performance as Vanessa Ives on horror drama series Penny Dreadful. Number 7. Michael Fassbender From 2011 to 2015, Michael Fassbender enjoyed one hell of a hot streak, landing two Oscar nominations and seeming to confirm himself as a mighty A-lister, whose first actual win was surely just a matter of time. His work across period fair, blockbusters, and contemporary dramas demonstrated his enormous versatility, suggesting he'd be up to his waist in prestigious projects forevermore. But sadly, the last five-ish years have been the near-total opposite of that. A string of disappointing duds like X-Men Apocalypse, Dark Phoenix, Assassin's Creed, 
adds song to song, and worst of all, the snowman, make it clear he's lost his career momentum. Though Fassbender's performances in these movies were mostly decent, and he single-handedly helped keep Alien Covenant from being a sure disaster, they were nevertheless a disappointing waste of his efforts. At least with him having already filmed the starring role in Taika Waititi's new comedy Next Goal Wins, the outlook for another quality project on his filmography is looking mighty high indeed. Number 6. Taraji P. Henson Taraji P. Henson shot to fame after receiving a Best Supporting Actress Oscar nomination for 2008's The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Yet despite subsequently winning long-standing roles on TV shows Person of Interest and more recently Empire, her movie projects have proven spotty at best. Since 2012, Henson has just one top live-action role to her name, the terrific Hidden Figures, alongside a supporting voice role in the acclaimed animation Ralph breaks the internet. Her dud projects, meanwhile, include terrible comedies like Think Like a Man 2, What Men Want, and Coffee and Kareem, junky thrillers such as No Good Deed, Term Life and Tyler Perry's Acrimony, and even an ill-advised foray into trashy action in Proud Mary. She clearly deserves movie projects worthy of her considerable acting prowess, but they sadly just aren't materializing. Henson will next voice the villain in Minions The Rise of Gru. While she doesn't have any upcoming live-action projects on the release slate. Number 5. Edgar Ramirez Edgar Ramirez is a clear-cut case of an actor who desperately needs a new agent. Ramirez came to prominence with his Golden Globe and Emmy-nominated performance in the 2010 miniseries Kalos. But save for supporting roles in Zero Dark Thirty and Joy, his post-Carlos career is littered with atrocious genre films. The critical and or commercial flops include Wrath of the Titans, Deliver Us From Evil, The Liberator, The Point Break Remake Nobody Asked For, Hands of Stone, The Girl on the Train, Gold, Bright, Wasp Network, Resistance, and most recently the 0% scoring Netflix thriller The Last Days of American Crime. Ramirez did receive acclaim and a golden Globe nod for his performance as Gianni Versace in 2018's The Assassination of Gianni Versace. But his big screen credits sadly leave much to be desired. Ramirez does at least have a ton of high profile projects on the horizon, including Simon Kimberg's new thriller 355, the Dwayne Johnson starring blockbuster Jungle Cruise, and Love Child, a new indie drama from dark comedy extraordinaire Todd Salons. Between them, these movies could at least give his boxed office cred a neat boost, if not also his critical standing because he deserves so much better, damn it. Number 4. Anne Hathaway with an Oscar to her name and a string of box office successes, there's no denying Anne Hathaway's status as a bona fide movie star. And while she doesn't boast a losing streak to rival most of the actors on this list, her last year alone has offered up a trio of critically pillared projects, suggesting she might need to slow down and rethink what she says yes to. Between 2019 and 2020, Hathaway appeared in the widely panned drama Serenity, which she then followed up with the legendarily terrible comedy the Hustle, but the worst was yet to come. As earlier this year, she starred in the extremely disappointing Netflix thriller The Last Thing He Wanted, which, with a mere 5% critical approval rating, remains her worst-reviewed film to date, proving this movie was the last thing audiences wanted either. At least with a lauded supporting performance in the recent thriller Dark Waters, and planned upcoming projects including Robert Zemeckis' remake of The Witches and James Gray's new drama Armageddon Time, she'll hopefully demonstrate her recent failed project were a mere career misstep. Number 3. John Travolta The beloved 90s actor now trapped in the Straits of VOD dungeon slot was either going to go to John Travolta or Bruce Willis. But given that Travolta has two Oscar nominations to his name, while Willis hasn't won a major award in two decades, the former's downfall feels that much more disastrous. In the last decade, Travolta has just a single critically acclaimed movie to his name, Thai West lo-fi western thriller In the Valley of Violence. While his panned projects include include From Paris with Love, Savages, Killing Season, The Forger, Life on the Line, Criminal Activities, I Am Wrath, Gotti, Speed Kills, Trading Paint, The Poison Rose, and The Fanatic. What a list. A good number of these films are low-rent genre films dumped straight to streaming, with Travolta's last five movies all scoring an inexplicable 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's weirdly impressive in its own way. 
A fall from grace doesn't even cover it. Because despite earning a Golden Globe nod for his performance as Robert Shapiro in the 2016 series The People vs. O.J. Simpson, his movie output is basically less than nothing. Travolta hasn't got anything on the docket due for release, which, given his current streak, might actually be a good thing. Number 2. Betty Gilpin Betty Gilpin shot to fame for her widely praised, twice Emmy-nominated performance as Debbie Liberty Bell Egan in Netflix's wrestling drama Glow. And so it was just a matter of time before she attempted to make the leap to major movie roles. Sadly, her transition has been anything but smooth, as despite appearing in five notable movies over the last 12 months, in A Dog's Journey, Stuber, The Grudge, The Hunt, and Coffee and Kareem, every single one of them has received mixed to highly negative reviews. Though several of these movies saw Gilpin pigeonholed into forgettable supporting roles, she was at least generally accepted to be the best thing in both The Hunt and Coffee and Kareem. So that's something? Gilpin is set to play conservative media pundit Ann Coulter in the upcoming third series of American Crime Story, and has already wrapped a major role in the 2021 sci-fi blockbuster The Tomorrow War. So things may start looking up from this point. We hope. Number 1. Eric Roberts Yet nobody on this list can hold a candle to Eric Roberts. Yes, brother of Julia, father of Emma who scooped a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nod for his performance in 1986's thriller Runaway Train, and more recently appeared in both The Dark Knight and Inherent Vice. But Robert's bread and butter is basically appearing in seemingly any project which will pay, resulting in him having over 570 credits to his name to date, more than 50 of which are in some stage of production at present. The man performs in so many projects that critics literally can't keep up, resulting in the overwhelming majority of his projects being scarcely reviewed at best, firmly in the knowledge that most are low-rent, forgettable, straight-to-bargain-bin thrillers. Roberts is a great actor, no question, and can help bring at least a sliver of gravitas to even the worst movie. Yet it's just a shame he isn't able to commit his energies to more worthy Hollywood projects. And that's our list. Know of any other great actors who keep appearing in terrible movies? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button. I've been Gareth from WhatCulture.com. Thank you very much for watching today, and I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon.